what we got going on here. <clears throat> well, this is a little bit different in the fact that we've got an evenly distributed load. Well, will that ever occur? Well, yeah, just the weight of the beam, right? You know, I've been coming in 74 and they're putting all these big beams up on that new bridge that they're building and, you know, they're huge. Well, when we start calculating a, a bridge like that, we have to consider the weight of that beam. It's that big. So the days of, you know, well, it's negligible. That won't be the case. And you may have a situation like that where you're trying to, uh, let's say you're trying to uh, size the supports for a big machine that you've designed. You know, they, they had machines when I was co op at Millicron where I had to go and climb around on those machines Take, tape measures and scales or, or rulers and and go and measure parts, brackets and such. And I mean, you'd, you'd get on ladders. You know, they were, they, one of them was actually a, a composite tape laying machine for uh, carbon fiber to build wings for a plane. Well, we're not talking little, little things anymore, are we? It's basically just laid layers of tape down is what it did. Kind of like your 3D printers we've got in here, but it wouldn't have fit in this room. You know, so if if we have to design a carriage for that, it's going to be pretty heavy. So we're not going to be able to forget about those weights at that point. So this is a case where that's going on. So you've got the reaction at A and B. You've got a 10 kip force, you know, being applied here on this beam out at four feet. This is going to be considered the concentrated load for the uh, evenly distributed load, which they're saying is two kips per foot over a 12 foot span. 12 foot? The whole thing? Oh, okay. I, didn't, I wasn't seeing the whole picture. It's like, wait a minute. I was thinking the 12 foot was this right here. Whoa. Huh. So. 24 kips, and then, uh, well, there's the two kips per foot, the showing of that. So, so you only have two things going on here, okay? So what's my free body diagram look like? Just basically like that minus the, <laughs> minus all these arrows. <coughs> 24 kips, 10 kips, A, in my book, it's A-Y, B-Y. And they're only using the W in front of W equals, or they're just using W to signify weight? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see, so that's four foot, six feet, and 12. So again, if we wanted to do the reactions at A and B, uh, let's see, we've got, well, we could do forces in the Y, right? Equals uh, AY plus BY minus, what was it, 10 and 12, 22? Oh, 10 and 24? Oh, it was 12 times two, wasn't it? Yeah, so 34. Sum the moment at, oh, we'll do it at A. So we got 10 times four, right? And that is negative minus 24 times 6 plus by times 12. Somebody cheat and look in the book. What is it? Been there? Fifteen point. I don't like can we trust the book anymore. Three three. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> yeah, and then they're showing eighteen point six seven for a. Kips up with AY 
ends up being 18.67 according to the book. It is kind of scary, isn't it? Up. Okay, then if we, and what are they asking there? They say, uh, look at the shear, internal shear moment at seven feet from the left. So there's your seven feet. So what's going on in the first seven feet? Well, let's see. Now, that's interesting. See, this is, this is why I want to look at this. Because the evenly distributed load was 24 kips at six feet, right? Well, look what happens when you, when you cut it at seven feet. The new free by diagram looks like this. You've got 18.67 here still. And you've got the 10 kip force out here and that's uh, four feet right yeah well this this is only seven feet right so the new force for the evenly distributed load is the two kips per foot times seven feet which is 14 kips. And that distance then is three and a half. So that that's what changes if, you know, depending on where you cut it, that evenly distributed weight, the concentration is gonna be different, isn't it? So we cut it at seven here, did they ask to cut it anywhere else? No. But if you cut it at 10 feet, you know, it's going to be 2 times 10, it'd be 20, and it would be 5 foot from the edge, wouldn't it? So, keep that in mind when you're doing these. So, then what do we have? Uh, can we figure out what that is? Well, for the shear, what we got? We got 18.67, right? Minus 14 minus 10 so 5.33 and that's a is that a negative that's a negative value yeah, isn't negative it? 5 okay so the V is going up because it's negative which is just these conventions just throw everything out of whack don't they to what we did at the beginning of the semester. What's the uh, what's the moment going to be? Do the moment down here maybe. Well, let's see. We got eighteen point six seven going up, right? Times seven feet minus fourteen times three and a half feet. minus 10 times 3 feet right if this was 4 and that's 7 we're doing the moment right here right where we so cut it are we forgetting are we still thinking about clockwise or counterclockwise or yeah um, but it's opposite now yeah it's based on what these forces are doing if they're pointing up count them positive According so to what this cat clockwise and stuff, just look it up or down. Well, and and look, here's what the, here's the moment that's actually going to be happening, the internal moment that's going to be happening to this. It's kind of like at least our other I took this class last semester, so at least the other teacher tried to say it's because it was in the middle of the beam instead of out on the end of one of the beams. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But now you're taking the moment kind of in the center of the beam. Well, look what's happening. Your your this your your pin here, right? And this is trying to this is trying to make that thing go like this, right? Yeah. So the reaction to it is just the opposite. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the internal force. This is the internal force that's reacting to this. This is external. Okay? That's what these two loads are doing to that. This is the internal that's resisting what's going on there. That's what we're looking for. 
So if that helps. And the only way you can do that is to forget about what we learned early on. And if it's going up, it's positive. If it's going down, it's negative. Which is screwy. Now, what do we end up with here? Does he do this one? Mm -hmm. Is it that 171? 51. Oh, let's see. Which, oh, I'm, I'm one page ahead. It comes out to 57, and that's a negative? 51.7. Whoops. Positive. It's on 274. Oh, okay. I'm, look, I'm not far enough. 51. It's positive, 51.7. And what's nice about that, and that's Kip's feet. Now, here's what we can say, though, Clark. It is a positive value. That is a positive moment, isn't it? That's what, you know, I mean, it, it, it'll make your head hurt. Because all of our convention was just the opposite of that for the first part of the semester. And now, but again, we were looking at what was going on out here on the end. And it was just what those, what those external forces were doing to it. Now what we're doing is looking to see what the internal force that's reacting to what, what was really going on there. So that's why the, the uh, you know, if it's, if it's going up, it's positive. If it, and it was not have been that back when we were looking at the external. But since we're looking at internal forces, that's what you've got going on there. That's, I think that's probably the one concept that would, would hold you up the most. So in other words, we could calculate it the same way as before, and then we, the answer we would get would be the external moment, and then we'd have to reverse that right. to get the, what's reacting. You take, take the inverse of that, yeah, to get what you're, essentially that's what you're doing. So yeah, hopefully that doesn't make your head hurt too bad. What's this one? Is that the same problem? No, that's a different one. Okay, so this one just says draw a shear body or draw a shear diagram for the simply supported beam having a load of load that's shown here. Reactions have been calculated and are indicated. So they're really not, well, okay, this is stepping into drawing that um, shear diagram. I didn't really want to get there yet today. I wanted to save that for Friday, okay? Because we're just gonna, this is the last chapter we're gonna do. So, um, yeah, so let's leave it at that. Now, problems to do for Friday, and I'll post the solutions here. You don't have to worry about anything until you get to 13.7. You can do those first couple ones if you want to. I don't care, but it's just it should just be review. Excuse me, review. Okay, so 13.7, 13.8. Thirteen nine, and there are two of each on those, and it covers basically that covers all the different scenarios that you would get into. And then thirteen eleven, but you only need to do A. You can do B if you want, but if you do if you can do one, you can do both of them. I think. So, you know, I don't want you to get too much busy work. So. Uh, the only thing I would caution you there is keep in mind 13.7's pictures are above it. They're the first two at the top. I Because I was looking at the solutions manual and it's like, well, these, these don't even match up. Well, the way the pictures are oriented in this book is has a lot to be desired too. So, <laughs> I mean, you can, you, yeah, you, you think you're doing one problem and it's like, oh crap, it's, it's the wrong problem. I've done it several, I've done it a couple times giving you the problems to do. It's like, what in the world? So I did have time this morning and made sure I, I got the right problems that I wanted to do. So uh, 7, 8, 9, and 11, A only if you want. You can do both if you want, but just A only is, would be 
good enough for me. Also, uh, I would suggest, I, I think I got an email the other day that, um, about the course evaluations. So in your spare time, hit that too. Not just for me, but for anybody. Yeah. Do it. Scathing review. Whatever it takes, you know. I don't care. We talked about that, I think, one day that, you know, it's, it's supposed to make it better. 